Have you ever used deep research mode by ChatGPT? Deep research is such a special type of skill to be able to break a topic down into sub questions and then search for sources, dive into the sources, get maybe a different perspective, find gaps, and then produce a report. Langflow is the best way to build agents, the most straightforward visual way to build AI agents. And in this video, we're gonna look at how you can create your own deep research agent or multi-agent system with Langflow. Let's look at this now. To do that, we go to this flow. This is a multi-agent deep research flow. And as you can see, it's multi-agent because we've got many agents. We've got one agent, two agent, three agent, four agent, five agents. And each agent is specialized at its own task so that at the end, you can have a stable and high quality report. A multi-agent system makes sense when you want high degrees of specialization and fault tolerance. For example, if you had one agent do all the research tasks, that is, um, break down the topic into a bunch of questions, then find sources that answer the question, then browse the internet and read each source, then identify any gaps that are missing, and then check for maybe counter viewpoints, and then synthesize a final report. If you want one agent to do this, um, that agent is going to have many tools. And we've previously created content. We've written a blog post, my colleague Melissa Herrera did, around why having too many tools for one agent can cause problems. TLDR of that, it's the same reason we develop analysis paralysis as agents when we need to make choices. Too many tools can cause confusion and, and just lends itself to less ideal outcomes. If you have multiple agents, you can have different agents with fewer tools specialized in their specific task, maybe for summarization, resource or source gathering, um, or synthesis of the final report. Each agent has its own thing, and therefore, each agent has its own point of break. Your system is way more um, distributed. The, the responsibilities are more distributed. So if, for example, your summarizer agent is giving you problems, the entire flow is not affected. It's just this one agent. Moreover, multi-agent systems give you fault tolerance, where if an agent is down, then the entire system isn't down. Let's look at this agent in detail and look at how we together can build our own multi-agent systems with Langflow. So what's actually happening? Well, here we have a deep research agent. and it accepts an input from a user. If we go all the way to the beginning, we have a chat input right here. And this is where a user gives a topic, um, whatever you're interested in, the stock market, AI, GPUs, whatever it may be. Then we hand it over to a research planner and look at the system prompt. You are a research planner. Your task is to break down the user's question into two to four sub questions that together cover the topic. So here's your instructions. You analyze the user's input, you identify the core dimensions or unknowns and write three to seven clear self-contained sub questions and then we tell it what format to respond with. Okay, we've done that. We then pipe the output to our own chat output and then to the next agent. So now our breakdown agent, as it were, is creating a bunch of sub questions and giving them to the next agent. Okay, but what is the next agent doing? Um, this agent has a tool, web search, and this agent is a research assistant with access to search tools. For each sub question, find the most relevant source and for each source, get the title, the URL, a summary, the full content or a placeholder and use this format. So this one um, goes and finds sources that answer those questions given by the first agent. All right, let's look at the next one. Then we have a summarization expert. For each sub question and its sources, go extract data from those sources. Focus only on content relevant to the sub question. Summarize each source in two to four bullet points for respond in this format. So we now summarize those links we visit. Finally, we review the research. So we have another agent to analyze the current coverage of all the sub questions and identify any missing information for any missing information, identify gaps and propose new questions. And then at the very end, we have a professional research writer. Your task is to synthesize a structured report that fully answers the main question using the summaries provided, group findings by sub-question or theme, et cetera, et cetera. So we have, I think it's five. We've got, we've got one, two, three, four, five agents working sort of as a, as a research team. These folks are gonna research, they're gonna browse the internet, they're gonna synthesize the report, they're gonna summarize information. Let's look at how this works. And then we'll talk about some advantages here that you only get with a true multi-agent system, okay? So to do that, let's go to our playground and we'll just say, I want to do some research into the citric acid cycle and how energy is created in humans. Um, and so we'll send that. And what we'll see is the chat output 
uh, receive, there we go. So that's the first agent. How does the citric acid cycle contribute to energy production in humans? Here are the sub questions. What are the steps involved in the citric acid or the Krebs cycle as it's called? How is energy generated and stored? What role do other metabolic pathways play, et cetera, et cetera. Um, this agent had issue retrieving detailed information from the searches, but it's gonna try again and succeed. Um, so here, it appears that the search results are not providing detailed information directly. I will now provide a summary based on this. So it's, this is what we talked about with fault tolerance. This agent, for some reason, can't access the internet, but it's going to provide data from its own knowledge base instead. So here, um, these are the steps and functions that answer the first question and so on. And then it passes it on to the third question, which is um, the summarization agent. So it provides a summary based on all of the established knowledge, which is great. A lot of this is true. Finally, the fourth agent identifies some gaps. The summary does not include specific details about enzymes involved in each step of the citric acid cycle. It lacks information on how the cycle is regulated. So this agent is kind of like devil's advocate. It's like, hey, hey, this report isn't comprehensive enough. You're missing stuff here and there. Uh, and so that's gonna pass it then to the final agent that's going to fill in those gaps, either from its own knowledge, or it may even um, search the internet if given the tool. Let's take a look. Finally, we have the final report that answer these new sub questions that fill in the gaps. So final report, the citric acid cycle and energy production in humans. The citric acid cycle, also known as the Krebs cycle, is a fundamental metabolic pathway that occurs in the mitochondria or powerhouse of human cells. Um, so we cover the enzymes involved because that was a weak point. Check this out. It said here um, in, in one of the, the gaps, it says this does not include specific details about the enzymes involved. So straight up, here are the enzymes involved, right? Our agents have done their work. These are the enzymes. This is regulation. Um, and these are what contribute to adenosine triphosphate or ATP. Anyway, a lot of this is biology, but the, the point here is we made a deeply researched report based on the combined work of a team of five autonomous agents that feed off of each other. Now, these agents are sequential, so they ha they work one after another. And that's because they depend on each other's work, right? You don't have answers to sub-questions if you don't have sub-questions. But some agents can work in parallel. Other agents can call back to previous agents, and you can even use agents as tools to other agents. This is just dipping our toes in the water of what are multi-agent systems, and we do intend to create way more content around this. But for now, what did you think of that? Is this something you can see yourself using? Is this something you're already using? Let us know in the comments below or at us on social media. One more thing before we wrap this up, let me show you a, another really cool benefit of Langflow and multi-agent systems. If you come back to our flow, you'll notice each agent has a model provider and a model name. And for all of them, we're using OpenAI and GPT 4.1 Nano. What if we wanted the final synthesizer, the main one, um, this one, you are a professional research writer. What if we wanted this to use a more beefy model like GPT 4.0 and we just like run it again. So let's go to chat output and we'll expand it and we'll run the same thing again. And now it's going to run the flow again, but this time the final report is going to be way more dense because 4.0 is just a bigger model. So when you have a multi-agent system, you can pick and choose and tweak different agents for different things, different models. You, you, don't, you don't even have to use OpenAI, right? Some could be anthropic and some could be OpenAI and others could be uh, whatever you want. You could even run on-premise local models. We have some content about that. Multi-agent systems are a great way to exercise the single responsibility principle, but with your AI agentic workflows. We can't wait to hear what you think, and we do hope you like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and add us on socials. For now, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one.